Welcome to my workshop. In today's video, I'm going to be making a jig to help us out in creating star knobs. Okay. I do a lot of jigs around my workshop and I think they are always a fantastic additional benefit to a woodworking workshop and having the ability to make them relatively quickly and easily is definitely a bonus. Hence the jig today to make star knobs. The material I'm going to be using for today's jig is 18 millimeter MDF. Well, actually this is the MR MDF, which is the moisture resistant. However, if you've got plywood, you can use that, but the thickness is the key a little bit here. 18 millimeters. If you do have a sheet material that's 18 millimeters, it will be fine. We do need to cut two strips, one 15 centimeters wide and the other one needs to be seven centimeters wide. To do that, I'm going to be using my table saw. And the length of the board needs to be at 46 centimeters. That's for me to have three different sizes of star knobs. However, if you just want to have one size, obviously adjust the measurements. Okay, so both of these pieces will have to be sandwiched together. But before we do that, we need to establish a couple of things. As I said, I want to have three different sizes of star knobs. And I'm going to be using three different sizes of hole saws. In my case, this is 72 millimeters. That's 60 millimeters and that's 51 millimeters. That's the three sizes of star knobs I want to have to my disposal. And they're gonna be more or less spread apart like so. Okay, so with those two pieces, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna place the smaller one on top of the other one and make a line. That's gonna be my line where this piece will be ending. Right, with the line sorted, now we need to establish the position of our hole source. I'm not going to make any precise measurements here, guys. Just going to eyeball it so they're more or less equally spread apart. And the distance from the top of the hole saw to the line itself, I'm going to go for about five millimeters. And I'm going to mark this off. And I'm going to more or less mark the middle as well. Right, with that sorted, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a straight line through that mark that we did across here. This will help me to align the second part of this, okay? So I can see the straight line there, and I need to put the whole saw to overlap the mark that we did, okay? The arch that we did, how much overlap? Well, it all depends on what type of a shape of a star knob you want to achieve. I would say between five to seven millimeters of overlap should be absolutely fine. And again, mark the middle of the hole. In the top part, just over here, as we marked, I'm gonna countersink with this 20 millimeter Forstner bit to accommodate for this T-knot and the T-knot will be holding this M6 bolt, six millimeter bolt, and the drill bits in my hole source are six millimeters as well. Now the countersink with the Forstner bit is the safest to be done on a pillar drill or a press drill. Now I've set up a seven millimeter depth stop as that's what I'm gonna need in this case. For the next step, I need to connect both of the pieces together and I'm just going to be using screws for that, okay? So this is our bottom and that needs to go underneath, just like so. With a scrap piece, I'm just going to put that underneath there just to have everything nice and level. I'm going to pre-drill some holes, countersink it and drive in some screws. Back at the pillar drill, now with a seven millimeter drill bit, I'm gonna make a hole for the bolt and the T-nut. Now with six millimeter bit, I'm gonna make a pilot hole in the second section of our jig. This will make sure that the hole saw that we're gonna be using in a second will be in the correct position. 
I have set up a depth stop uh, to make sure I'm only cutting through the top piece and only scorching the bottom one. And now with a bit of brute force we can drive in these T-nuts into place. With those in place we can drive in the bolts. And as you can see it's nice and flush with the base of our jig. And I'm going to carry on with the other two. Now the jig is actually completed. You're only going to need some wing nuts and washers. Right, let's make some star knobs. All right then, I'm going to be making a small version first and the jig will be set up in one position on all the cuts, okay? So we are using this hole over here, right? Uh, the jig is clamped down with a clamp at the back and a clamp over here to the table of my pillar drill. And now what's left, I found a piece of scrap wood lying about in my workshop. So I'm just gonna clamp it down so it's nice and secure. So it won't move on us. I have now removed the circle, I've not moved the jig itself. It was easier for me to remove the hole so and to uh, get the biscuit out. You may need to clean it out with a bit of sandpaper, um, depending on how sharp your hole saw is. So now this circle, this biscuit goes just over here on that bolt. Then you need to put a washer on top and a wing nut. and make sure it's tight, okay? So it's not gonna move on you. We can install back our hole saw. We not move the jig at all, and the hole saw will now cut out a piece in that circle. And there you go, that's our star knob cutout. Nice and simple way of doing it. Now, obviously my sides are not equal. If you want, you can put some marks on the jig itself. And then when you put the biscuit on top, you mark it as well. And you just rotate it and match the marks on the jig. So you're gonna have equal spacing. However, my OCD will be just fine with this as is. So I'm going to carry on, I'm going to cut out a few more of these in all the sizes. Right then, with all the star knobs cut out, now I've swapped to a smaller hole saw. This one is 28 millimeters. Um, basically, we're going to create this little foot. Now, this step is not necessary. However, I think having the base to the star knob is actually quite beneficial and it's a lot easier to use it. So, I'm just cutting them out. Now, with my bandsaw, I'm cutting these in half as the material was a little bit too thick for my liking. With my sander, I'm just going to clean up all the pieces so they're nice and smooth. Now in these star knobs, I'm also going to be installing these T-nuts, okay, these types of furniture fixtures. However, uh, the hole needs to be about 7mm, so I've put a 7mm drill bit, so basically I need to enlarge the holes. Now, if you're going to be using the same type of fixture, you can pre-drill the holes uh, for the spikes. However, I don't do that. I don't find the need for that. The last thing to do is to add the base itself, okay? So I'm going to be using a bit of wood glue to connect both of the pieces together. Thank you. 
No need for clamps, just use a bolt, washer, wing nut or a normal nut. And there you go, it's clamped down. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of them and I'm going to wait for the glue to dry. With the glue dry, what's left to do is to add a bit of finish and protection to it. I'm just using furniture wax. And there you go, nice and simple star knobs, really easy to do. And as I said, you can have different sizes as well. And sometimes that's important. Sometimes you need a bigger one for your bigger jigs or setups. However, on some occasions, you just need a much smaller version. And this jig that I made allows you to do that. Now, this is obviously very simple setup here and you can customize it and change it however you want to fit your needs and whatever sizes of star knobs you want. Now, I hope today's video was inspiring to you, you enjoyed it, and maybe you will do something similar to fit your needs. If you did enjoy the video, drop me that like button down below. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel and don't go just yet. I've got some really cool playlists just over here Plenty of cool videos around workshop, DIY, woodworking and everything in between. Hopefully, I'll see you on one of those videos there. Take care.